I said, wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be great? The Lord said, no. <laughs> what do you mean, no? He said, that'd be sensational. And it'd be spectacular. And he said, I'm not into that. I'm into the miraculous. And I'm into faith. See, Hollywood's sensational and spectacular, and the church has gotten dumbed down so much over the years that we watch Hollywood and we think that's cool. See, God is a miraculous, supernatural God. Amen. He's not interested in spectacular. He's not interested in sensational. He's not interested in your life being sensational or spectacular, but he's real interested in your life being miraculous. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. think impossible. We don't think impossible. We don't, we don't think it can't be done. Amen. 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 God wants our lives to be miraculous. Amen. And so the Spirit of the Lord came on him. And yeah, we're in the King's Church. So he had the power of the Holy Spirit. He had the blood. He had the name. He said, David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord God of hosts. You come with a sword and a spear. I come, I come in the name of the Lord of hosts. Well, the Lord of hosts is who? It's Jehovah Sabbath. He's the, he's the host. He's the head of angel armies. Pilate looked at Jesus and Herod looked at Jesus and said, boy, don't you know who I am? Don't you know the power I have over you? Don't you know I can kill you? I can crucify you. And Jesus said, let me tell you something, you little, you little pygmy of a man. If I wanted to, I could, call ten, I could call 12 legions of warrior angels, mad angels by the time they got here. They'd be mad. They're mad right now. But so help me, I won't. So help me, God, I won't. I came here for this. You're, I'm not playing into your hand. You're playing into my hand. I'm here for this. But don't you ever forget it, Hotshot. You don't take my life. I give it. You're not taking my life. You have no power, Jesus said to him. You have no power except what God gives you. You know, when I was a little boy, we used to sing a song in church called, He could have called 10,000 angels. That's not what Jesus said. He said, I called 12 legions. There's 6,000 to a legion. Six times 12 is 72. Have you ever seen 72,000 mad warrior angels? Jesus could have called 72,000 mad warrior angels. There wouldn't be anything left of Jerusalem but a bloody spot where it once was. But he said, so help me God, I won't. I'm here for this. But don't you kid yourself. You're not taking my life. I give it. I'm the one pulling the strings here. I'm the one in authority here. See, Christians get a goofy idea, I think, of the crucifixion of Jesus and the martyrdom of all the apostles. Yeah, go ahead. Because the church gets thinking, well, didn't they have faith or did their faith not work? Or, 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 or they all got horribly martyred. They all got horribly killed. Jesus got horribly killed. Paul got horribly killed. Peter got horribly killed. Thomas got horribly, horribly killed. Bartholomew, they skinned him alive. Right after Renee and I got married, we, we went to Malta to, to preach a pastor's crusade. And when I go to Malta to pastor's crusade, in fact, we'll be going again this year, uh, 
Malta sits out in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea between Europe and Africa. And the Bible calls it the Isle of Melita. It's where Paul was shipwrecked and, and, and got bit by the snake and shook it off in the fire and all that. And uh, so uh, when I do a pastor's conference there, I, I get pastors from northern Africa, from Egypt, from Tunisia, from all there. And I get pastors from Italy and Greece and Spain and north, uh, southern Europe. And it's just, it's just tremendous. And uh, so the first, when we first got married, I took her to Malta. We did a pastor's conference. And we stopped off in Rome. And, uh, and I asked her, I said, have you ever been to the Vatican, ever seen the Sistine Chapel? And she said, she said, no, I've never seen the Sistine Chapel. And I said, well, I want to show you. It's just marvelous. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful. And so I took her down to the Vatican, and we went to the Sistine Chapel. And uh, the Sistine Chapel has is, is, is got that famous painting. You've all seen it a gazillion times. In the back of the, uh, up here, like the pulpit's here and the crowd's out here, and the back wall is this huge, total, paint, uh, the whole wall's covered with this painting that uh, Michelangelo, uh, Michelangelo painted. And uh, it just shows all of creation and, 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 and things past, present, and future. And, and I just marvel at the revelation the man had. I mean, it just boggles your mind when you look at that. And I guess you can go a hundred times and see something different every time because it's huge. And it just, it's in a circle. It's, in a, it's painted in a... And, and right in the middle is that famous thing where God and, and man are touching, touching fingers, you know, like God's reaching down like this and man's reaching up like this. And famous, famous. Google it. Just Google painting in the Sistine Chapel. And, uh, and it shows hell. It shows, I mean, it shows heaven, it shows hell. I mean, it's, it's, it's just beyond imagination. And uh, at one point of it, if you look straight at it and look at the, the fingers, and God's right there in the middle, if you look just, to, just lower than center, I'm trying to help you find it when you, when you Google it. If you look just lower than center and just a hair to the right, center, lower, right. Not all the way down the corner, but just just lower and right of center, you'll see Bartholomew. And Michelangelo had such a revelation and understanding of those things that he's actually painted Bartholomew holding his skin because they skinned him alive. They skinned Bartholomew alive. When they martyred all those apostles, they they crucified some. They they did some with swords and some with spears and and, and some they pushed off the temple and all kinds of stuff. But Bartholomew, they literally skinned him alive. Now, I'm a hunter and a fisherman. I know some of you folks are too. And Dean and I have hunted and fished all our our 40 years. And uh, and I've skinned lots of stuff, you know, but I never skinned them alive. And I mean, they, they literally skinned Bartholomew alive, and Michelangelo painted that where Bartholomew is sitting there like this, holding his skin. And it's like he's saying, when I saw it and looked at it, it's like he's saying, This is what it cost me. Yeah. 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 This is what it cost me. Yeah. I don't know if you computer gurus back there could even pull that picture up or not. I never thought about that, or I'd have told you before service. In fact, if you give me 37 seconds here, I think I've got a picture of it. I, I had no plans to do any of this tonight, so I'm, I'm called as unawares as you are. <laughs> if it takes me very long, I'll just quit, but I'm not much of a quitter. <laughs> the problem is I have 64,000 pictures <laughs> on my phone. But I actually have this one marked so I can find it, I think. Unless Renee's been playing with it. <laughs> Our grandbabies. Ah, oh, it's not look ah, oh, looky here. Looky here. Looky here. Hmm? Yeah. Now, I know this is a big church, so you probably can't see it, but you folks up here. Here's the painting, the whole thing. And then if you look right, ah, excuse me, if you look right there, yeah. Bartholomew's holding his skin. Yeah. Y'all got it? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. You mean, yeah, oh, you want me to hold it still? Yeah, that's right. It's there. You guys are great. Tell me when I can move. Y'all see that? Yes, sir. And it's like, I look at that and say, 
this is what it cost me. You think you've had a little hardship? This is what, this is what it cost me. You think it was a little cold to go to church? This is what it, this is what it cost me. You think pastor hurt your feelings? This is what, this is what it cost me. <laughs> they didn't just hurt my feelings. They skinned me alive and I still feel like it's worth it. Come on. Yeah, come on. Amen. So uh, the supernatural, those guys all were martyred horribly. And I think the church gets the idea, eh, come on. faith doesn't yeah. work. Well, yeah, but Jesus, would, yeah, but Bartholomew, yeah, but, yeah but, but, but Andrew, as nice as he was, they killed him. They crucified Peter upside down. Thomas quit doubting, got the Holy Ghost, and went to India to preach. And they ran, ran him through with lances. You know, Thomas, I don't know if you know this or not, but Thomas um, went to India and preached in the two southern states. 2,000 years ago, the two southern states. 2,000 years ago. And if you go to India today, the two southern states of India are the most Christian, the most prosperous. The two southern states is every time you have a credit card bill you need to check up on, that's who you talk to. You call, you call, when you call customer service, you get a guy from one of those two southern states. <laughs> 2,000 years ago, Thomas preached the gospel. And it's still going on. It's still going on. It, isn't that amazing? Y'all get anything out of all this? Because this isn't anywhere close to where I was going tonight. Praise the Lord. But God wants your life to be supernatural. Amen. Amen. There's two worlds. Which world are we living for? Amen. We, sh we, should, be, we should be on first name basis with the teller at the bank of heaven. Yeah. Come on. That's good. You know, my granddad used to. In fact, I used to. Walk in the bank, the president would come around and say, hello, Mr. Myers, how you doing? Hello, sir. How, how, you know, I mean, we, we were on first name basis. I'd go in there and say, hey, I need to borrow $5,000. He said, okay, you don't put anything up for collateral? No, I'll just do it on my name. Okay, here. You know, you know our name used to be good. My granddad was an auto mechanic, owned his own business forever, and I worked for him when I was a kid and as a teenager, and then intended to go into business with him when I, when I you know, grew up and he even had put mine and his name on the business was waiting for me to get there and uh, I was very close to my grandparents but uh, God spoke to me at 13 and said you're a missionary so the hardest thing I ever had to do in my entire life was to go to my granddad and say granddad I can't go in business with you I'm going to be a missionary and I'm going to travel all over the world and uh, but uh, you know he, he would literally tell me to go buy some auto parts and it's big order you know and, and, and to send me to the parts store. And he'd just grab a brown paper sack. In Texas, we a sack. Up north, it's a bag. But <laughs> he'd just grab a brown paper sack and just scribble his initials on it like that and hand it to me. Just, just a, ripped off, a ripped off piece. Of, and he said, just give him this. So I'd go to the auto parts store and I'd give him a list of auto parts I needed. Big, big box, big money. And I'd just say, here, granddad said, give you this. Oh, yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His name was good yes, on, on a torn piece of paper. Uh -huh. yeah. And now we got lawyers, teams of lawyers to make contracts that thick. Yeah. Just full of loopholes. And then we search those things trying to figure out how can I get out of this? How can I get out of this? I always figured, I always figured if I went to the mission fields when I was a kid, I figured, figured if I go to the mission fields and I can find a guy with gray hair and I need something from him, if I can get him to look me in the eye and shake my hand, I know, it, I know it'll happen. His word will be his bond. Yes. You don't think that way today with the younger generation. Well, one of those guys look you in the eye and shake your hand. You can, you can take it to the bank. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Y'all are y'all are y'all here? Yes, sir. What a gift is right. Let me see if I can pull something up real quick.
praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, where, where, where are you from? You know, your passport is stamped from heaven. You're citizens of heaven. Yes, sir. You're not from earth. You're from heaven and you're going to heaven. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. You're just passing through here. Yeah. This world is not your home. Nope. Don't get too comfortable. Because you can live there longer than you can live here. Yeah. Amen. What you do here counts. But uh, don't ever forget there's that other world. Yes, sir. And it's more real than here. Amen. You know, I used to do lots of missions conferences. Pastors would have me come in their church for four or five days and do missions conferences. And pastors hardly do that anymore. Most of them don't do it because they don't know how or don't know about it. And, and it's kind of died off. There are still a few we go to they are just powerful. And Brother Osteen used to have the best in Lakewood Church way back in the 70s and 80s. Um, and then he even changed his and changed it from a mission convention just to faith seminar, and so I quit going. And uh, nothing wrong with faith seminars, but I went to a lot of those, you know, and it was the only the greatest missions conference there was. But we still go to one in Ohio that's just, oh, it's wonderful. And, uh, but uh, in missions conferences, they'd have me take up money for missionaries. They'd, they'd, they'd want me to meet their mission, <coughs> missions budget. And if they supported five missionaries or 10 or 15 or whatever, then I'd, I'd get the budget for them. And, uh, <clears throat> And so I, I would go in and talk about this, this, this other world, the, and I'd use a scripture there that, that, that Paul used, 2 Corinthians 4.18, we don't look at the things we can see, but we look at things we can't see, the things we can see are, are temporal, are, are temporary, are, 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 are perishable, but the things we can't see are eternal. And so every time I'd go to one of these conferences, I'd go to a print shop in town, whatever town I was going to preach in, I'd go to a print shop. And I'd say, I want you to print me up a whole bunch of stickers. Well, they weren't stickers back then. They were just papers. In fact, I think I've got some in my briefcase right now. Uh, and I said, I want you to print these stickers with just one word on it. I want them to be about, be about this wide and about this long. It's just, you know, like this. And I just want one word on it, big black letters. I want it to say perishable. Perishable. Don't shoot yourself. I've got a pistol in there. Okay, if I bring a pistol to your church. <laughs> See, like this? And I just, I just have these printed up by the thousands. And, uh, and I take them to church, and I, I just put them on the book table and say, y'all, y'all get you some, get you five, get you 10, get you 20, get you 100. I don't care how many you take. But, but you need to understand everything you can see, hear, smell, taste, or touch is perishable. Yeah. It's not real. That chair you're sitting in, it's not going to last. It's perishable. You go down here and buy you a new car for 80000 90000 100000 150000 300000 it's going to get a dent in it. And it's going to have stuff break. I know people over the years, Damon, that go get them a new car. And, and when they go to Walmart or someplace like that, Sam, someplace, they, they park way, 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 way out there. And they park, they park in four spaces. So nobody's going to scratch their car. And then they walk to the, and I always tell people, you're so miserable over your new car. You can't sleep at night. You can't go enjoy shopping. I said, just kick a dent in it and get it over with. Just get it over with. It's going to happen. Just get it over with. You know, you can go, you can go have a tailor-made suit that costs four or $5,000. Walk out and buy a dress, thousands of dollars, a pair of shoes, thousands of dollars. I mean, you just walk down the street and walk by one, 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 one little post with a splinter on it. And it's gone perishable. I'm not putting a curse on you. I'm just saying. 
You can, you can believe God that didn't happen. I'll believe with you. I'm just saying that that has happened. <laughs> For eternity has happened. It's just perishable. It's just not going to last. And that's what Paul's trying to tell us. This world is perishable. And I say, now take these home and put one on your jewelry, put one on your bass boat, put one on your guns, put one on your furniture, put one on your antiques, put one on your refrigerator, put one on your television, put one on your head. Just, <laughs> you, you, I mean, if y'all looked in the mirror lately, <laughs> things are going south. <laughs> you don't look like you used to. Well, you don't. You know, my, my wife and I were on a cruise ship a number of years ago. And uh, these two elderly ladies, older than us, gray-headed. In fact, they weren't just gray-headed. They'd gotten into that blue. <laughs> not, the, not the Kool-Aid blue that kids wear today, but the, but the real live, honest-to-goodness, you know, old lady blue. <clears throat> And they were both dressed to the nines, man. I mean, they both had on evening gowns, beautiful. And uh, they were walking along, talking, going to the ballroom or somewhere. And uh, as they passed us, and her gown, this one lady had her gown really low cut in the back. And, and she had a big, huge tattoo all across the way her back. And it said, uh, 18 forever. This is true. And I looked at it, 18 forever. And, and it, was, it was faded in color. Seriously. And it was drooping here and there. And I turned to my wife and I said, I don't think she thought that through. I was with a bunch of teenagers one time. I was ministering to them. I used to take teenagers to Jamaica year after year after year after year after year after year and train them to win souls out on the streets. One thousands of one thousand, one thousand of souls. And uh, I'm one of the best soul winners you ever saw in your life, and I can, I can make you one. I've always said soul winners aren't born, they're made, and if you'll let me, I'll make you one. And so I take these teens to, to Jamaica and took Renee and Dean's youth group many, many times. Kids, Math is hanging around here, and you know, he, he's been to Jamaica with me many times. And, and uh, and, 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 and man, they, they, we go over there and win, win, win souls like shooting fish in a barrel. Because I'm anointed to do that and I can teach them to do it. And other groups would go over there and just, they'd see me and they'd just fall on me. I mean, chaperones and elders. And, oh, Brother Terry, oh, it's good to see you. It's the hardest trip we've ever had. I said, really? You having a hard time, buddy? Oh, oh man, the people are just not responsive and they just don't listen and, and we're just not. Uh. <laughs> One group was in Willie George's church, too. I've known Willie forever and they're in Tulsa, the biggest church in town. And, and they were just, he said, oh, man. And I said, sorry, you're having a hard time, buddy. Well, I didn't tell him. We were winning souls like shooting fish in a barrel. <laughs> you know, I'm just a better soul winner than they are. You know, I mean, I, mean, I know how. And I'm anointed to. Not a trick to it. I, I just know how. And I can teach you how. And so uh, I was with a bunch of these teenagers. And a bunch of girls were sitting over there, cute little girls, you know, 16, 17, 18 years old. And uh, a couple of older women walked by, and, and it was out by the pool, and so they had their bathing suits on, you know, and one of, one of them may have had a bikini on, I don't know. I'm talking about the older ladies. And so these girls looked at them and just started giggling, just kind of snickering. And I said, what are you laughing at, girls? Oh, nothing. I said, you, you looking at those ladies over there? Well, y yes, sir. I said, you just kind of snickering because they don't, don't look so good? And they said, well... Maybe they shouldn't be wearing a bikini. I said, well, you know what you don't know is they used to be cute like you. <laughs> what you don't realize is they may have been cuter than you. <laughs> and I said, and what you don't realize is you're going to look like them. <laughs> so go real easy on your judgment. And believe God that you'll uh, preserve better. <laughs> you know, we kind of just blow old folks off and say, well, they used to be pretty hot stuff. 
I mean, I'd take that bunch of 17, 18 year old kids that storm Normandy Beach. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And this bunch of sissies we got today. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Anytime. Yeah. A bunch of 17, 18 year old kids, some of them 16, lied to get in the military to, to serve their country. Yeah. And paid blood for it. Yeah. Didn't come home. They're buried in France. Buried in. And then you got a bunch of idiots today. Well, don't get me, don't get me on that. But they're perishable. There's two worlds. And we need to realize that other world is just right there. You know, as a kid and watch Star Trek and stuff, you know, well, uh, they'd talk about the fourth dimension. You know, they'd, they'd do the, they'd do the beat, beat me up, Scotty. And, uh, um, they had a teleprompter. And when Captain Kirk would want to just leave here and go somewhere else, he'd just get in that little tube and teleprompter. And, and then Scotty would push the buttons and he'd dematerialize. And then he'd materialize wherever he was going to go. Or he'd come back, he'd dematerialize there and come and... Teleporter, not teleprompter. What did I say? Teleprompter? Well, that's because I'm used to preaching. <laughs> teleporter. I'm sorry. Thanks for the help. I need all the help I can get. But... <laughs> But uh, <laughs> Miss Kitty's going to get in trouble here. <laughs> but uh, God invented that. God invented that. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah. Heaven invents everything first. Yes. And uh, usually he does it for missionaries. Everybody else gets the advantage of it, but it's for missionaries. Why do you think they, committed, they invented airplanes and computers and that, that's all to do the gospel with, and then the world gets in on it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But um, Philip was over here minding his own business, the evangelist. And God said, you need to go out in the desert because there's somebody out there I need you to minister to. So Philip goes to all the trouble and all the hassle to go out to the desert. And I don't mean he drove his nice new car out there. I mean, he, it cost him. And he ran into a eunuch that's reading the Bible and doesn't understand it. And so he said, you understand what you're reading? He said, no, I need help. He said, I'm just a man. So he gets in the chariot with him, teaches him the word. And then the eunuch says, well, can I be baptized? Here's the water. He said, well, sure. So he baptized him. And then, and then the very next scripture just says, and then Philip was found in Azotus preaching. I mean, Philip was found in Azotus. Yeah. Well, God said, step into that other world. Yeah. Amen. And then he stepped out in Azotus. You know what?